I'm very happy to be with you. And um, my uh, husband, Grami, we, and I, we just came back from Iceland because his son died. So we went there, his eldest son passed away suddenly. So um, we just came back. It's been a very interesting time. So, you know, if you think of him, he could use a couple of prayers. But, um, so God is good. And very, very faithful. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, the season of hope has begun. And the shift has taken place, and there is hope now in the land. And hope has been released. And this is a season where we need to step into hope. Because we have it, but hope, because hope is not based on circumstances and what it looks like. And so we need to shift as well so that hope manifests and we live in it. Hope is trust. That's what hope means. And hope is the is confidence, is the confident expectation. That is what hope is, is living with confident expectation. Because hope is grounded in a person. And learning to live in it and bring it in our circumstances. First Corinthians 13, 13, the scripture talks about the only the three things that will never pass away, that will remain forever, for eternity, with all the gifts and anointings and ministries and everything and all the blessings here pass away. The only three things that remain, hope, faith, and love, that will remain forever, for eternity will never end because is Jesus. You see, Jesus is hope. He is our hope. He's the hope the Father sent us. And because he is our hope, first Timothy eleven uh, sorry, first Timothy one one, Paul said I Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of our Lord and Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope. He is our hope. That's why hope is eternal. It will never pass away. When everything else, the disappointments will come to an end. But hope will not end. Faith, hope, and love, because Jesus embodies them. And they are from heaven, and they are eternal. So we are citizens of heaven and children of God. We can bring, we need to bring heaven to earth into our circumstances. We're the only ones that have it. We are the only ones who have access to these amazing things. All these three things, faith, hope, and love, are the elements of uh, that uh, equ equate or uh, are equivalent to the gold, silver, and precious stones that will stand the test of fire. We need to build with them. When everything is tested, those three things will remain. Nothing can burn them away or take them away because they are heavenly elements. So we need to build with them. We need to live every situation in our lives with them, carrying them, making sure that they are the, you know, nuts and bolts of what we are building and how we build, whether it's a relationship, whether it is, you know, a job, whether it's a ministry, family, our lives, our health, our relationship with God, everything that has to carry these three things, faith, hope, and love, the elements from heaven, the God builds with those elements. But we build with human elements. We build with the elements that, will bur that burn up, hay, wood, st stubble, st stubble, 
and that burn away and that's why we struggle so much because we are not paying attention that means we are building with in the same way the world builds relationships in the same way the world builds marriage we build them in the same way families relationships are built we build them in the same way that they deal i uh, build a business we do it and even try we try to live our christian life in the same way and build in the same way and that's why we see ministries falling and many things happening because the devil comes after those things but we need to build with these other elements they are indestructible and they are different and we need to build our internal dialogue with those three elements our thoughts you see our the voice of our subconscious has to carry that you see, because what we build inside of us is more important really than what we're building outside because what we build inside is what is really true you can fake it until you make it and sometimes you don't make it because you know faking ends but because what is inside comes out and you can't fake it anymore so i want to talk about this about hope because this is the kingdom of god and there is a lot of hopelessness that has been released you know a lot because there has been a lot of pruning and testing and shaking and sifting and it is good because the enemy is using anything he can to bring destruction and he is quite desperate right now he's actually going out of his way it's like all hell has come out against the kingdom in every area for real and the lord is also bringing to the light all the crooked things that are hidden It's the season when God is releasing the fear of the Lord is being released again. And we need to get back to that. So it is you know learning to live in the kingdom of God. And in Romans 14:17 it says for the kingdom of God is not a matter of food or drink it's not about earthly circumstances and earthly things human things that the, the for the world it is that is life but for us it is about peace joy and righteousness in the holy spirit and so and those things get released through hope hope actually releases those three elements it's phenomenal we'll see it in a moment and in matthew 6:33 jesus said but first and most importantly seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you we are dealing with two kingdoms there are only two kingdoms There's a kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. There is nothing in between. There's only two kingdoms and every day we live we belong to the kingdom of God but it doesn't mean we're living in it. And you see many we have every day the opportunity to choose which kingdom we will hang out in. You see what kingdom are we going to visit or be part of or enjoy today the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of God and that is your choice because it's you have free will we have free will you see and that is where we have to be so careful because constantly from morning to night the devil is knocking at our door the spirit of the world is after us he wants us back you see and if he can not take us into hell because of Jesus he tries to make us live in hell on on earth until until we make it to eternity by the grace of God he tries to release it into our lives through circumstances and challenges you see and we have to be smarter than we are like really seriously you know we have the solutions with us and uh, so it is which kingdom are you spending your days in which kingdom are you you know 
bringing your circumstances into, you know, you take, you are the one, you, you actually steward your circumstances. And so you can take your circumstances, your financial problem into the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of God. You can bring your marriage into the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of God. You can bring your children or your, your health or your, you know, whatever you are going through, it doesn't matter what it is. You choose in which kingdom you deal with it. And then the ruler of that kingdom, you know, makes decisions for you because you bring it in and submit it there. And so what are we doing with this? Really, we have to, because we have to watch this because that determines what we get in life. Jesus died to give us this abundant life, breakthrough, and victories. Yes, he didn't promise that it would be easy. He said there would be tribulations and problems and sorrows, but he would be with us, help us, and give us victory. And it will work out, guaranteed. You see, that's the promise that changes everything. He will make it work out, but... If you are living in the kingdom of darkness, you are nullifying for yourself what God wants to give you. You are blocking it. You see, because you are bringing it and submitting it to the ruler of the kingdom of darkness. And then you say, but how come God is not giving me a breakthrough? Where is the victory? Where are the answers? Where are the fulfillment of promises? What they happen in the kingdom of God? You see, they don't happen if we are living in the kingdom of darkness. So these two kingdoms are always fighting with each other. And the battles are very, very challenging, very powerful. I remember one time when Ivan, my first husband, was sick and with the cancer and one night, I knew I was going to die that night. And uh, it was, um, but I also knew there was a spirit of death in our bedroom. We both could see it. It was there for three months, stationed, staring at Ivan on the bed, and he wouldn't move. And uh, so we rebuked him and everything, and wouldn't leave. It was it's a long story. But anyway, that one night, uh, things turned out so bad, and I knew. It wasn't right. Like I knew it was a spirit of death. It wasn't the father coming to take him home. It was a spirit of death. It was very different, and the atmosphere was very different. You know, and so I got up and I began to pray, and I told the Holy Spirit, How do I pray? I don't even know how to pray right now. Because I knew the way it was that night, there was no way he wouldn't make it to the morning. And I knew it was that the spirit, and it was you know, I stepped forward towards him. Even one of our dogs would look at it, could see him, and was growling at him. I know, and was he laid across Ivan, and growled at the, at the spirit of death. <laughs> yes, it was that real. So anyway, and. Uh, uh, so I prayed as the Holy Spirit asked me to pray and I asked God to send help when all of a sudden uh, next to our bedroom there was uh, another bedroom that we made a storage area, closet area. And so uh, we removed the door. So uh, in that room, it was the, the light was out. It was late at night. When all of a sudden, this uh, audible sound of something crashing through and suddenly I saw this huge angel came down. And he had it was he had this sword, a sword in his hand. And he just came down and immediately the spirit of death that was attacking Ivan so strongly that night went over to fight with him. It was like a Star Wars movie. I tell you, I was there watching it as I was sitting on the bed next to Ivan, laying hands on him and praying up a storm. As over there, I'm watching this, and I could see these flashes of light as the swords, you've seen it, yeah, as the swords, were, they were fighting. 
It was fascinating. And they were fighting and it lasted for quite a while. You know, I mean, quite a while for me, you know, it's more than 30 seconds in situations <laughs> like that. But it went on for, I'm not kidding, somewhere between, you know, around 15 to 20 minutes. Like it was long, it was intense. And this sort, and I could hear, and I could see it, but a flashing of lights, of light as the swords were a demon and an angel fighting over my husband's life. You know, and then when it ended, the spirit left, death left, and I even turned around. And you see, and everything was fine, you know, at that, at that time, and until the father came to take him home. But that was different, and you know. But anyway, and so these things are real. There's two kingdoms that are fighting over us in every situation. But we have to choose the kingdom we are joining with. You know, every day, in every situation, in everything that happens. And hope is powerful for this. You see, because we need to align ourselves with hope, <coughs> with eternal things. You see, when you align with it, heaven moves. Because you are blocking the path. God is sovereign. We don't uh, stop God from doing anything. But we stop us from receiving. We stop the blessing. We stop the breakthrough. When we join in with hopelessness, with the discouragement, and, uh, you know, with the circumstances. So we empower, of course, we open the door for the kingdom of darkness, and we know the rest of the story. And we all deal with this. I wish we could say, you know, well, we just know we're so spiritual that we know exactly what to do. No, we have to deal with our emotions. And we have to deal with uh, the punch in the stomach first and process that and... You know, and the barrage of thoughts are coming from the devil and all of that. You see, but that's where we get to choose. We have choice. You can choose to let it bother you or not. You can choose. Years ago, years and years ago, Ivan and I and um, a group of our church, we went on vacation to the Caribbean. And I, I think it was, yeah, the Dominican Republic. Long story, and but um, I got, I ended up being stripped, searched, at the airport, and uh, I know, and so anyway, I kind of brought it on me myself, myself partly, you know, because uh, in the the those machines that you go through uh, were down, they were fixing the that side of the airport and so on, and there is a lot in that part of. The Dominican Republic, there is a lot of drugs and people trying to take drugs. And of course, I was coming to Canada. And it was winter in Canada. And this young lady, young, and so was, you know, when the, she had a bit too much power in her head. And so she and I had multiple layers of clothing. Four layers. I'm coming to Canada. You know, when there is, you know. And so, um, the, uh, she's asking me, um, why do you have so much clo clothing? Why so many layers? And then, I got cocky. <laughs> I gave, I can't remember the answer right now, but it cost me. But it was a very, uh, I was very uh, cocky. I just gave her an arrogant answer. And she said, go to that room. So, I know, I ended up, I know, you know, pride and arrogance, heftiness comes before the fall. <laughs> and so, there I was, you know, and it was so unnecessary. Because if I had just been humble and nice, explained nicely my situation. I don't have drugs inside. They apparently discovered later that they do the multiple layers to flatten belts with drugs and whatever, you know. I flattened my belly, but nothing more. And so, anyway, and um, so I came out of it, you know, and some of our 
people from our church were there. Ivan was laughing his head off. I thought it was so funny that we went through that. And so, the, but these other people from the, my church kept saying, how are you? This, they were up in arms. They were wanted to fight somebody because they had a pastor. This is our pastor. You keep searching our pastor. And so they said to me, how are you? How do we pray? What do we do? And I said, why? I said, well, it's, you know, that's so humiliating. How are you feeling? Are you, are you feeling really humiliated? And I said to them, well, that will only happen if I give it that power. It's my choice. It's absolutely my choice to let that be humiliating or not. I get to choose which kingdom I take this to. And I said, no, it doesn't have that. I'm not giving it that power. It was an experience. And we will laugh about this one day. We're laughing now. <laughs> you know, about it. And that's all. That's all there is to it. You know, and... You see, it is how we do it, and it has never, le it didn't leave anything. I thought the other day I was in some airport somewhere and something was happening, and I thought, oh, I wonder if it's going that way. Been there, done that, no problem. <laughs> you know, I didn't go that way, but you know, it's like, it's an like experience. But if I live in the kingdom of God, that doesn't have to affect us or define us, you see? your choice. So we need to align ourselves. And that is so important because we are, we are, and this is, a, I'm saying this prophetically, we are in the season of hope. It has begun. And it is brilliant and it is bright and it is light. But will you align yourself with it with, with, it, with hope? Would you align yourself with hope? Uh, would you align your thoughts with hope? Would you align your challenges and circumstances with hope? And I will tell you how in a minute, you know. If you know me, you know, I'll put shoes on this and you will walk it. But, <clears throat> but we have to align everything in our lives with hope. It's one of the three elements that will never end. Because Jesus is our hope. Because of him, he turns everything into good. Because of him, we have victory. Because of him, we are going to heaven. Because of him, you see? Yes. And because of him, we are okay. Even if we get a strip search in an airport. <laughs> we are okay. And come out of it without a scar. You see? It is Jesus. So, there are two scriptures that are so powerful, so, so powerful to bring hope and to turn everything into hope in our lives. Just amazing, and the application of them, we know them so well, but it's the application of them that I want to talk about, bringing everything into it, into this frame of that changes everything. And these two scriptures are applicable to anything and everything you are going through, whatever the test or the temptation is, whatever the challenge or the shaking, whatever, that's what makes it different for us. The first one is when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. You know, and he gave us the Lord's Prayer, our Father. And that, that prayer is it's a framework. It is, yes, I, I mean, it, praying it itself, praying it is powerful, repeating it. It's a powerful prayer and powerful. It is so powerful that it has been scientifically proven that people who say that prayer, people who are in deep depression and anxiety, say the Lord's Prayer and uh, they improved without medication in, in, in scientific clinical tests they have done, just saying the Lord's Prayer. This, the Lord's Prayer is one of the most powerful things to release hope. It's a source of hope. It's a reference, a point, you need hope. 
that we go there and that releases it and yes just as jesus saying you know the the lord's prayer but he said pray like this so the lord's prayer isn't just a prayer for us to repeat it as it is like i said which is powerful so i'm not saying don't do it I do it, I repeat it, I say it, and I mean it. I don't repeat it just as, a, you know, as words. That You see, it's important, it's powerful. But understanding the application, Jesus said, pray like this. He was giving us a frame, a prayer, a reference of how to pray. And you see, you can take any situation and... Use it for it and apply it, which is so brilliant and it changes everything. When you are struggling and you're going through it and there you are and how do I pray and you need hope to arise. It is, you can father heart any situation. In the in this situation, father heart it as in the Lord's Prayer, our Father. You can our father any situation, anything, you know, from your dog running away to the cow dying to anything that happens and you are going through the ministry, the church, the finances, your life, your health, your job, your, you know, anything and everything. You can take it and put it in that frame. And because he said, pray like this. And it shifts the atmosphere. It affects, it actually has effect on the situation. And, but it affects you as well, suddenly. It's so powerful. And this first one, then we'll go to this next one. And uh, he said, when you pray, pray like this. You know, he said, our Father, who, are, who is in heaven, who are in heaven, because this is a prayer. And so it's referring to him, it's acknowledging, it's going to him. You know, so there you are, you know, and uh, your child is going through trouble or my, or my daughter ran away from home and the things like that. And I would bring it like this, you know, and I would say, you know, our Father who are in heaven, who are in heaven, you know, acknowledging who you are talking to, acknowledging your fathering and your sonship. I'm coming as your daughter. I'm coming as your son. You're my father in heaven. I'm coming as your son, as your son or your daughter. That is what that means. You know, come as a child with the confidence of a son and a daughter addressing your father in your situation. You know, hallowed be your name. You know, in that, what Jesus is saying, also come with worship to him, acknowledging and give him glory. Acknowledge who he is. You know, my father, I'm coming to you because I'm your daughter. And you are sitting in the heavens, and you are awesome, and you are amazing, and you're worthy of praise, and you are great. You know, shift the attitude to that because that just stops you from complaining. And complaining is not prayer. Ranting is not praying. You see, that's what Jesus is saying. So, judging is not praying. And so, but this aligns you and suddenly positions you. You are talking to the great I am. It brings the atmosphere of, and positions you in the atmosphere of heaven. You are talking to the sovereign Lord. The Almighty God, who is your Father. That's why you can come directly to Him. You see, your kingdom come. And in this we are saying, Father, your kingdom come. Peace, joy, righteousness come in this situation. And Father, I'm praying for my daughter right now, my situation with my daughter. And I thank you because your kingdom, you have peace, you have righteousness, you have joy, you have hope for this. And I'm welcoming it and I'm coming to receive it. 
Your kingdom come. What is your kingdom? Not food or drink, but peace, joy, and righteousness through the Holy Spirit. And I call it forth right now. Father, I thank you. And I ask that you will fill her with your kingdom, that you will release your kingdom into me right now. Peace, joy, and righteousness in this situation. You know that I will have peace and I will not, you know, fall apart today. That I will have peace in this situation. That your strength and your joy will come to me. Righteousness that I will not judge or lose my cool today and yell at her or somebody. You know, that I, your righteousness will hold me to my character so that I behave today and she will behave today. That wherever she is right now, your peace will reach her. Your righteousness will come into her life. You see, that's your kingdom come. And Father, when you pray, your kingdom come, you know, bring your, your request, your desire, Father, that she will come and be restored to you, that she will be delivered from her trouble, her addiction. This is my request, that you will bring deliverance and bring your request. He said, your kingdom come, now the next step and your will be done. You see, we, but... This is my request, and I surrender it to you. That you, in spite, you know, you do whatever, you do your will, even if it looks different to what I'm asking, that your will will be done, because at the end, it will bring the solution. Your way is better than my way. So I'm bringing you my request is this. This is what makes sense to me. These are the things that make me feel that I will have peace, joy, and righteousness. But do it your way. That's what you are saying when you say your will be done. But do it your way. This is, I'm suggesting my way, but do it your way. <laughs> do it your way. And that's what I want in my church, in, you know, in my ministry, in my, in my job, in whatever it is. You know, I, your plan, not mine. This is, you know, my request, my plan, but do yours. And I'll be okay with it. You know, be done in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread. Give me what I need to get through today. Give me the provision that I need to make right decisions. If your problem is financial or, what, or whatever it is, give me what I need to get through today. That today, if I need patience, it will be there. That if I need wisdom, it will be there. That if I need understanding, that if I need extra love, extra grace, you know, to get through this situation with my daughter today, that give it to me today. I need your portion. I need your provision to get through this situation. You see, it acknowledging our dependence on him in this situation. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those. And Father, I humble myself to you. And I forgive her. And I forgive this person. And I release. And I repent for my judgments. I repent for my attitudes. I repent for my iniquities. And also my transgressions. You know, transgression is outward sin. Iniquity is heart sin. The things that only God knows, those hidden thoughts inside, that's iniquity. It's you know, internal sin and transgression is external sin. You see, so, you know, in whatever way I, you know, I, I have sin in my heart in this situation, please forgive me and I forgive her. And I forgive my neighbor and I forgive my boss, of, you know, and I release and I forgive all judgments and everything. You know, I forgive and I, and I repent in Jesus' name. You see, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The word lead us not into temptation. Some people struggle with that saying, you know, why is that? Does God lead us to temptation? What that actually means is, don't let me go into temptation. Take me in another direction. Take me in a different, in, away from the path of temptation. Don't let me go into it. That's what it means, is lead me away from it. When it says, and lead us not into, lead me not into temptation. 
It's, and Father, please, whatever temptation will come in this situation, lead me away from it. Don't let me go into it. And deliver me from the enemy. Defeat the devil for me. Defeat the demons that are working. Send that angel with a sword and to fight, to do the Star Wars thing, you know. For yours is the kingdom and the power of the glory and the glory forever. And we go back to, and I thank you because you are the only one. You are mighty. You are, you know, we declare his sovereignty and we are submitting to his sovereignty. You see, this frame of prayer is what Jesus was saying, pray like this. With this frame of prayer, what Whatever it is, you are going through whatever is happening. Immediately, hope gets released. You wake up in the middle of the night, and the problem is running through your mind, and what's going to happen, and what about this? Because the devil is there trying to bring you into his kingdom. You know, so this will position you in the kingdom of heaven, and out of the, keeps you from the kingdom of darkness. So instead of spending the next four hours awake trying to figure it out and going through all the what-ifs and all of that, just take that into the Lord's Prayer, into that frame of the Lord's Prayer. And you will see the difference. Peace will come. Joy and righteousness come into your heart. Hope will arise. That's the main thing. Hope arises. That means Jesus arises, and now he can send the angel. He will send the angel with the sword. Now he will come to defeat your enemies. You see, because now you are submitting it, and you are establishing the kingdom of light over the kingdom of darkness. It's that simple and that powerful. Whatever it is, you, you know, all day long in every single thought and situation, just take it to it. Our Father, we're in heaven. Go talk again because now <laughs> we talked about my daughter and I have to talk about my dog. <laughs> you know, and there we go all day long with this. But you see hope arising. And that is the thing, hope. This is the season. And this is you know, for prayer, for intercession, and you find yourself so many times, what else do I pray? How else do I pray? Because we are trying, and yes, we intercede, and yes, we pray, but the scripture tells us that it is not by the strength of the horse, but by the might of the Lord that the battles are won. And many times we think that it is how strong we pray that scares the devil away. No, it's God. It's Jesus. The more he arises in you, the more the devil backs away. I used to be, you know, very upset, praying and praying and, you know, trying to make the devil listen and demonic things listen and all of that. And then one night I had a dream, powerful dream, because it was a frustration I had and... And in the dream, there was, I was standing here, and there was someone standing on my right. And across in the field there, there was all these demons cause, just causing chaos. Just, it was terrible, and they were, it was horrible. And I was telling them to stop, and I was telling them, and I was rebuking them, and I was trying to exercise every bit of authority I knew and I had, and I was saying in the name of Jesus, but I was using the name of Jesus to empower me, empower what I was saying. You see, it doesn't work that way, by the way. I done it a lot, it doesn't work. You know, to empower me, and because I didn't have things aligned properly, and they were not listening. They would look at me and kept on going, and some of them would mock me. And it was driving me crazy. And suddenly I turned around to complain to the person standing next to me. And it was Prince William, all dressed up in his, priest, 
and his prince, prince, prince outfit, outfit, and it was all, you know, it looked like sometimes you see him in pictures with this red jacket with gold buttons and all the things on the shoulder and all this military position and authority and everything, you know. And it would look like that. He was wearing all his. And I was, look, I, I was there as I was, you know, complaining about why don't they listen? I'm doing everything. I'm telling them, even in the name of Jesus, nobody's listening. And I looked, and the moment I looked and I realized who he was next to me, I turned around and I said to the demons, listen. Look who is with me. He is here. You know who he is. He is the heir to the kingdom. He is. And at the time, before his father was king, but I said, he is the son of the king. And I said, and he, and I said, which in the dream didn't make sense, but then I understood, of course. I said, and he was dead, but he is alive. Do you see him now? He's here. And he's alive and he's fine. He is the one who overcame everything. He is the future king. He is the son of the king. And in his authority, his name and his presence, you have to listen. You have to stop. I knew have to obey immediately. They stopped <coughs> and they bowed down to him. And it was a big lesson that God was telling me. It's not your anointing, your authority, and don't use the name of Jesus to empower yourself for them to listen to you. Make sure is Jesus present with you. And he, they will bow to him. And you just make sure you are aligning this properly. He is the one <coughs> with the authority. Because of him, we have his delegated authority. You see, but this is, it is not, yes, we pray. And yes, we are meant to pray and pray and intercede. And keep on going, but we have to understand is by the might of the Lord, not by the strength of the horse, that things happen. And uh, so no matter what's happening, we can run to find hope in the Lord's prayer. Whether you just pray it for yourself, as Jesus said it, and you say it, but bring your situation, use the frame, use the frame that he gave us, the points and the frame, fit it in, submit it to it, and you will see the answers. And you may get to see the Star Wars I had that day. I've, I've had others, but in the same thing, because this changes the atmosphere. And the next one that we all know very well, and it is as powerful as well, is not a prayer but a declaration. And this is a declaration, again, that we can bring into the situations, but this one requires a great alignment. It's also hope. It brings hope into whatever you are going through. And this is a declaration for yourself, to shift the atmosphere to the enemy is just a declaration. And it's Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is a source of hope. And it causes things to happen. And in Psalm 23, as we know it, you know, but first, John 10, 11 to 15, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. But he who is a hireling and not the shepherd, who it, that he doesn't own the sheep. When he sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. 
the hireling would flee because he is a hireling and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know those that are mine, and I am known by those who are mine. Even as the Father knows me, I also know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, and here's that part we can say he is, you know, the Lord, uh, Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd. It's amazing, and it is true, but only if you are a sheep. You have to be a sheep. And we don't want, not always like to be a sheep. That's a problem. You know, we want to tell the shepherd what to do and how to do it. And, but you have to be a sheep. And then it works 100%. Position yourself to be a sheep. You know, and a sheep follows the shepherd. The sheep fix their eyes on the shepherd. The shepherd is the most important person uh, in being in their lives. Because sheep are actually defenseless. They are not, they don't fight, they don't have that. They're not like goats. They're different. They d depend on the shepherd for everything. They don't, don't actually go out looking for food like a goat. They go out and find and climb places, and that sheep don't. The shepherd has to take them where the food is and the water, or give it to them and feed them. You know, and it's so so powerful and so important. So we have to understand a sheep is a hundred percent dependent on the shepherd. Goats are independent and go to the shepherd only when it is convenient. But the sheep don't. They're 100% dependent on the shepherd. And therefore, they trust the shepherd. If you know people, and I even used to for, was work with goats for a long time, so I learned a lot through him. And then I have seen, have seen some and, uh, goats, oh, sorry, sheep in the, in the f for shepherds. And it is amazing to see they don't care about anybody else but the shepherd because they know that shepherd is the absolute source for them of survival of life of everything. And the trust, the trust the sheep has is so incredible. The, the trust that they have in the shepherd. So this psalm works. If you are a sheep. That's really important. And this is that declaration that you are going through it and you're thinking about your tomorrows and how it's going to happen and look at the circumstances. You know, these things turn the circumstances into hope and release it. And there you are. And so you can find hope in this, you know. It's the declaration you are making. The Lord is my shepherd. And he has to be. That's the thing. He's not using words. This is different. It's not like I was doing, using the name of Jesus to empower me and using it, using it as a tool. You know, in the name of Jesus, demons knew I was using his name as a tool, so there was no, they didn't listen. But when I addressed, this was the person who has that name. Everything changed. It's the same thing here. They know if you are a sheep or not. The enemy knows if you are a sheep or not. The wolf knows if you are a sheep or not. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see, because he's my shepherd, I will not lack anything. I will be fine. That's the statement. When we say that, that's what it means. So you can bring your emotional turmoil and your fears and circumstances to this because it's an alignment with hope in the kingdom of light. You know, he's 
The Lord is my shepherd. I'm okay. I'll be okay. He's my shepherd. I'm not alone figuring this out. See, the shepherd figures it out for the sheep. And so he is my shepherd. I'm not alone. I have a shepherd. You see, and therefore I will be fine. You are declaring that to yourself, to the devil, to the circumstances, and to the kingdom of darkness. He makes me lay down in green pastures. That means he protects me. He looks after me. He will make sure I am okay. I don't have to make sure I'm okay. He will lead me there. He will get me there. That's what a, sh a sheep does. They follow him. They don't. You see, I don't know if you can herd the goats, but that would be a headache because they go wherever they want. It's like herding cats. But, you know, but with sheep is different. You know, in Iceland, for instance, it's fascinating. Iceland is a land of sheep. So I have learned a lot when I'm there uh, visiting. And uh, what they do is all the farmers, all the shepherds, they have their flocks. And when the lambs are born, they, uh, you know, mark them or do whatever they do so they know where they belong, people who see them. And then they release them in the mountains. And they leave them there for the haul from the spring Till the end of the summer, they just leave them there. They live free on the mountains in Iceland. And you drive around and there's sheep everywhere. From so many shepherds. Everywhere. And then when the time comes, of course the shepherds come and they look at, to look after them. They don't just abandon them. But they give them freedom and they are there. And so but they come and they know... And when the time comes at the end to come and gather them, the shepherd comes and he stands there and they start coming to him. And then he calls them and they come to him. You know, and all they don't get mixed up or anything. It's fascinating. And each shepherd, each farmer gets their sheep and they go. You know, nobody steals from each other. And the sheep know where they belong. It's, it's fascinating to see this whole thing. How sheep work. You know, they get to know their shepherd. So, you know, uh, he leads me beside the still waters. This is for your soul. That means he will give me peace and he will give me rest. I don't have to freak out. I don't have to worry. I don't have to go through all of this because he will give me peace and he will give me rest because he's my shepherd. He will take me, my good shepherd, he will take me to green pastures. I will not lack anything. And he will give me peace and he will give me rest. That will um, lead me beside still waters. He restores my soul as he does that. The sequence of this is fascinating. I am okay. I will be okay because he is my shepherd. He will lead me to green pastures. And in there, he will, uh, he will take me to still waters. He will give me peace. He will give me rest because he's my shepherd. And as he does that, he will restore and heal my heart. He will heal me from the wounds. He will heal me from the fears and the worries. He will deliver me. He will restore my soul. He will lead, he will lead me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You can, that's why the, one of the problems we have, we are here, we are meant to live to defeat the devil and not to live in the kingdom of darkness. We have to walk in righteousness. You, we cannot do it on our own. The shepherd is the one who leads us there. And that's why we struggle with righteousness so much. Because we cannot do it on our own. The shepherd leads us into 
the path of righteousness. That means he leads us to make the right decisions according to scripture, to live according to scripture. <clears throat> For his name's sake, that means because of faithfulness, because of his faithfulness. Even though we walk through the, even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not alone. I have, I won't have fear. I'm not alone. He's with me. You see, this is so powerful. I, w I wish I could, you know, somehow demonstrate the power of this. I will fear no evil. This is to the devil for. You are with me, for he is with me. The devil cannot, as here we are saying, no matter what happens, the devil cannot hurt me or touch me if I am with the shepherd. The devil can't. The shepherd will not allow that to happen. You see, but if you have to be a sheep for this, that you become untouchable to the devil and you will be fine at the end of anything. Your rod and your staff will comfort me because the rod is to fight the predators. You see, that's what the shepherd has a rod for, is to fight the wolves and to fight the predators, which is what Jesus has done and still does. But if you are fighting the wolf, you get yourself in trouble. But the shepherd is meant to fight it for the sheep. Sheep don't fight the wolves. Sheep never fight the wolves. They are not. They're kind of defenseless, really. But the shepherd is the one. That's why he has the rod and the staff. To defeat, to fight the predators for you. So let him fight it. Be a sheep. Let him fight the wolves and the predators. Instead of you wearing yourself out fighting demons, let him do it. Let him fight the spirit of poverty. Let him fight the spirit of division. Let him fight it for you. You know, it gives peace, rest to know he will fight them for me. That's hope. That's victory. <clears throat> You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. This is so incredible because it is intimacy and fellowship. That's what Esther did in the presence of Haman. A table, she sat in a, for a, in a banquet with the king in the presence of her enemy. Fellowship with God. You see, Fellowship with God in the presence of your enemies. You get the favor of the king, and he will. He, you know what happened to Haman. You know, for Esther. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This is hope. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Intimacy and the presence of God is guaranteed. You will be in the presence of God. Guaranteed, no matter what happens in your life. And this is a realignment. We see this with King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat lived this. In Second Chronicles 20 when he was facing three armies against him and the circumstances were so bad against him, he was going to lose the kingdom. And sometimes it feels like you're going to lose everything. The circumstances are saying nothing is going to work out, even though you have promises from God. And uh, King Jehoshaphat trusted God. His hope was in God. That means his trust was in God. And God, the good shepherd, led him. And God provided the victory. He defeated his enemies. The rod and the staff came out. And he defeated the enemies of King Jehoshaphat and his army because they were following him. See, he will guide me. They were following him. We 
follow when we follow the word of God and we follow our prophecies. That's what King Jehoshaphat did. He followed the prophecies, the prophecy given to them. You see, that's what it means to follow the shepherd. It means you follow what he tells you to do. And he turned into good what was going to be for complete destruction and disaster. Turned it all around, and instead of failure, they ended up with the greatest victory that has ever been seen, so big that the enemies, the rest of the kingdoms were afraid of his God. And they never bothered him again. He had peace for the rest of his life, his household and his kingdom forever. No one ever attacked him again. And they collected the plunder instead. The spoils of the battle came to them. And this is what God wants to give us, like King Jehoshaphat. But you have to be a sheep. See, he was a sheep. A goat would have never, would have never known what, God, what Jehoshaphat did. You see? When God said, go, don't worry, just go, but don't fight. Get a worship team at the front. You know, and you are this few tiny bit of people with three armies massive in front of you. But don't fight. Just go and do it. You see, you have to be a sheep to do that. And I stand there like a goat and say, no way. Yeah, what are you thinking? You're crazy. That can't, do, it can't happen. You see, in the kingdom of God, if we are sheep, we will see these two things, these two scriptures happening in front of us. You know, when I used to pass, when we passed through David and I for 25 years, longer than that, and uh, you know, there were times when we had, <laughs> we have, we were having a leadership team, goats and sheep. And Lord Jesus help us. Because you had the sheep and the goats arguing. You know, the sheep are saying, well, but these are the prophecies we have, and God has said this, and we will do it, let's go do it. And then the goats were saying, oh, no, 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 that doesn't work because of this and this. We have to find our way. And there it was. You see, because then both kingdoms begin to fight with each other. The goats are pulling for the independence, and we will make this happen. We'll do it. We know better. And the sheep are saying, but God said we'll follow him. You know, you can have this in your family or in your marriage, in every situation. You can have it with yourself, your spirit, and your soul. You know, your spirit is a sheep, but your soul may be the goat. <laughs> you see, so make sure if your soul is a goat, make it a sheep very quickly. <laughs> and then you will see the difference. And I just want to pray for an impartation for hope and a transformation. And I was actually going, to, I thought I was going to speak on something else, and the Lord changed it during the delay of the flight. So there was a purpose, I guess. And so, uh, you know, for hope to be released in this. But these two scriptures, if we apply them, not just in knowledge, but in applying them like this into our circumstances, in the middle of the night, and you're having, going to have a panic attack because of the circumstances, you know, just stand there and saying, no, I don't need this because the Lord is my shepherd. I will be okay. He makes me lay down in green pastures, leads me to still waters. He will give me the peace I need. And it comes. <coughs> and the hope arises. And this is the way we walk into the fulfillment of the promises of God. Only this way, sheep always get there. Goats, not always get there. Please st stand with me. <laughs> and in Jesus' name right now, Father, we just stand before you 
and we went to humble ourselves in repentance. Father, for we have not been following your word, and we have not even follow, used the tools you have given us to shift circumstances. We went to repent for our friendship with the kingdom of darkness. And how quickly we go to the kingdom of darkness. And we release the kingdom of darkness. And we bring every sit our situations into the kingdom of darkness. So Father, right now, we want to change actively and intentionally kingdoms and live in your kingdom right now <clears throat> and bring everything we have in the kingdom of darkness out of it and transfer it to the kingdom of light, to the kingdom of God right now. In the name of Jesus, people, finances, marriage, families, health, some of you have your health in the kingdom of darkness constantly bringing the fear, the negativity, all, you know, loom, doom and gloom and all those things. And then we wonder why is nothing happening? Why, where is my breakthrough? Your jobs and finances, church and ministries. In the name of Jesus. With the authority given to me, I break off the power of the kingdom of darkness over this church and over everyone here in Jesus' name right now. With the authority of the Son of God, who is our Lord and Savior, he is our hope. In Jesus' name right now, I break off every bondage from the enemy and from the kingdom of darkness right now in every situation that we have submitted to his kingdom right now, and I remove all authority in Jesus' name. All authority right now from every person here and from this house in the name of Jesus. For these are the sheep of his pastures, and these are these Everyone here, this is a flock of God, of the flock in this area of North Carolina. So in Jesus' name right now, I release freedom into you. And I call you, in Jesus' name right now, out of the independent spirit of the world. The ind independent, independent spirit. Of I have to figure this out, and I will do it. I will take care of myself. I have to take care of myself. And, it, you know, that makes you forget that you have a shepherd. And that is causing many of you to be hopeless, to be weary, to be afraid, to be frustrated, giving up, and even walking away. Walking away from God's promises, walking away from a scripture, walking away from church, walking away from destiny, walking away. So right now, I just release an impartation for the heart of the, a sheep within you. It takes a lot of letting go to become a sheep. It takes a lot of trust to become a sheep. But I bless you right now to be sheep and not goats. I break off in every area or any area with that independent spirit that came in the Garden of Eden. Of Eden, In the name of Jesus, I break it off right now out of anyone who says in his heart, I don't want to be a goat. Or their goat tendencies. Maybe you are not a goat in every area, but in some areas. I don't want that anymore. I want to be a full sheep. In Jesus' name right now, I just break off tiredness, fears, and insecurities. They have come all the stress, 
All the stress, goats are always trying to find their way. Sheep trust the shepherd. To, he's in charge of the way. He's in charge of the process. So I bless you in Jesus' name. And I break off right now. Every demonic stronghold that has been working against this church and against you right now in the name of Jesus. And all the work of the enemy that has come to steal, kill, and destroy for what God has sent will never, ever, ever be nullified by the devil. And the foundation of this house was established by sheep. By pastors Dave and Pastor Aina. And they are true sheep in the kingdom. I know them. I know them for too long. I know. So in Jesus' name right now, I just bless the DNA of this house. And I call forth back to life what God has spoken over you. And I declare a shift in the atmosphere over every person here, over this church right now. In the name of Jesus. And Father, right now we say, release your kingdom. Father, I call forth hope. Right now, this is the season of hope. So I release an impartation for hope. And right now, for that is for a spirit of hope to arise. As you align yourselves with hope. In Jesus' name, that hope will arise, that you will live in hope. Because like I said earlier, hope is not on circumstances or people changing or people doing. It's in him who leads you. And he is the one that makes it all work. So I bless you in the name of Jesus with rest and peace. Rest and peace to enjoy. Because sheep enjoy where they are. They enjoy the season. They, they actually enjoy it. The seasons where they are in. Because they have no worries. The shepherd takes care of them and they do what he tells them to do. It's a different way of life. So I bless you in Jesus' name right now for new beginnings that will come, for burdens to fall away, heaviness to go. There is a lot of heaviness. I keep seeing shoulders, heavy shoulders. So I break that off. For the responsibility belongs to the shepherd, not to you. You follow him. So in Jesus' name right now, I release this house from any bondage from the enemy on every one of you. In Jesus' name. And I declare the restoration of Psalm 23 to come into this place and into your lives. Into all of you into your businesses, finances, health, life, relationships, in the name of Jesus. I release it right now. All the hope and restoration and new life to spring forth in Jesus' name. And I call forth wisdom, revelation, and understanding. I release an impartation for the spirit of understanding, for the spirit of wisdom, revelation and of the knowledge of God to arise within you, to recognize and have the discernment and uh, to, the discernment to discern the kingdoms you are in and the kingdoms in every situation. In Jesus' name right now, that you will have eyes to see and recognize the thoughts that lead you to one kingdom or to the other kingdom. The voice of the enemy The voice of the accuser, the comforter, the voice of the deceiver, the angels of light. In the name of Jesus, right now, that you will be sharp and strong. That you will be wise and quick to know the difference. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and recognize the fruit of each kingdom in your lives. And recognize the paths, the thoughts that lead you to those places, the decisions that position you there in Jesus' name right now. Father, I thank you for your power. 
And I thank you, Lord, for this house. And I just bless River of Life. Father, I thank you. Father, for River of Life. And I call forth the rain to come. In the name of Jesus, for the rain to come. Because hope brings accomplishments. When the hope comes, is the confidence of what is to come. The confidence of what has been said, this conf that confidence. And this season of hope is releasing that. And rain will come to the ground. And seeds that have been there are going to come up and come back to life. And harvest fields are being plowed by angels right now for river of life. So, Father, we thank you that you are mighty and you are powerful. We thank you, Father, for you are holy and you are great, Father. We thank you that you are mighty. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you know all things and all thoughts. <coughs> and, Father, we thank you for your kingdom over this place. And I bless River of Life to receive the fullness of the kingdom of God, peace, joy, righteousness in every situation. In the name of Jesus, Father, we, I thank you that you have made plans that no one can take and there's a season of a new life that is arising. Father, I thank you that you are turning pages and in this season, Lord, you are writing even new pages for this church. I thank you, Father, for the breakthroughs and for the dam that the enemy had placed. And I break it off right now, and I thank you that you are releasing new waters into this house. And everyone who is here, too, for the, your individual lives. Father, I thank you for your will that is being done, Lord, and I thank you that your will will manifest, Father, your way, not our way. And your way of doing it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for provision. And Father, that you will give every day provision to this church and provision to everyone to walk today, to receive what they need, to stand strong with faith and might, that whatever it is, whether it is material, spiritual, financial, relational, in every area, you are releasing it to this house. And this house will have the provision for each day. But Father, we release Right now, forgiveness to all that have stood against this house, as you have forgiven us, Lord. And Father, we repent for any areas of iniquity because of the opposition, because of the criticism, because of curses that have been spoken. And Father, right now, we thank you, Father, that you will bring freedom and deliverance, that you will lead this house, Father, away from any area of iniquity of hearts, where there will be judgments or any temptation. But I thank you, Father, that you are bringing this house into the path of righteousness for his, your name's sake, and they will stand firm. So, Father, we thank you for victory. And, Lord, we ask you to deal with every demon and every spirit against this house, and against Pastor Aina, and against the leaders, and against Father, every person who is here tonight. I bless you to sit at the banquet table with the king in the presence of your enemies. For victory is secure for the sheep of his flock. In Jesus' name, amen.